2016, I traveled to Cuba for a surfer magazine editorial trip. With a 60-year embargo lifted, our mission was to search for waves and document the journey around Cuba. To get there, we flew to Mexico City, obtained a tourist visa, and caught a connecting flight to Havana. When we were going there, we weren't 100% sure if we could get in or if we'd be allowed to shoot there. I traveled with my friend Dylan Gordon, Max Klinger, Lex Weinstein, Jaron Mill, Cyrus Sutton, and Otto Flores. The original edit titled Che Don't Surf was released by Surfer in 2016. My tenure at Surfer lasted seven years, ending with its shutdown in October 2020. My main goal with this Redux edit is to provide more context about the journey and show more behind the scenes footage. This trip was a turning point for me as a filmmaker and to date has been my favorite location I've ever traveled to. I hope you enjoy this Redux edit of Che Don't Surf. Well, when I first got called upon to go to Cuba, it didn't even cross my mind. I, it's, it's been on my bucket list. I'm, 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 I'm from the Caribbean and this is one of the places I've never been. I grew up with a lot of Cuban friends that, that, are, that are really close to home. I mean, I grew up listening to Cuban slang and listening and eating their food and all that, so it was a given that I wanted to come on this trip. The expectations I had, I, I actually left those behind. I didn't have any. I just wanted to suck in everything that came in. And, and I think it's the best way to come to Cuba. To be honest with you, um, just to listen to what they have to say, just to see how they live, and just to be part of their culture and and be welcomed is, is, is something unexpected, but at the same time, it, it exceeds all the expectations that I had for the trip. We spent two weeks in Cuba and traveled throughout the entire country from Havana to Barracoa in search of surf. And the entire time, we didn't find a wave over two foot. But for us, it wasn't about finding the best surf. It was soaking in the culture of Cuba. I am from Puerto Rico and there's certainly a, uh, a brotherhood we feel. Uh, in Caribbean people and, and I felt it a lot when I tell people that I'm from, from Puerto Rico, that I'm a Boricua, um, but at the same time you could see the difference in opportunity and, and you could see it on an everyday life. But one thing that I've really noticed in Cuba is the level of education of everybody out on the street is second to none. Every person that we talked to had a professional in their family or 15 professionals. And it seems like families here have professions to help each other. So, for example, my cousin's a mechanic, uh, my aunt's a doctor. So it, between their own families, they take care of themselves. And, and that's something that I haven't seen in a lot of places, including Latin America. It seems like the land of opportunity just gives you a choice to do a lot of things. And it seems like here, it's the obvious choices what they go for, you know, and the choices that would help their family and their loved ones. So. It's a pretty creative and, and an intelligent way of life, even though they, they don't have means. And to be honest, we've asked a lot of Cubans. I mean, that's one question that I've asked a lot of Cubans is, are you happy with Cuba? And they're like, I wouldn't have it any other way. You know, they're definitely, it's the way of life that they've been given. And they've taken that way of life with a smile and just kind of ran with it. <laughs> When that thing pulled up, I was just like, no way, we're going in this thing, and it's like some big supposed Chevy, but it was like the ultimate surf safari 
vehicle for all of us to throw our boards on top, pile in on this wild, <laughs> Mr. Toad's Wild Adventure surf cuba ride. <laughs> What just happened? We just hit a car in an intersection with um, a very large Chevrolet tank. tank. No. It's a tank. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It only took us five minutes to hit some car with this fucking truck. <laughs> five minutes. For the truck, when you see it physically, you don't have an idea how fast it could drive. And uh, the potholes and it just the, the whole experience, you know, where we stopped and the whole journey. I mean, I. I'm pretty sure it was like 12 hours to get here and uh, it was the most interesting 12 hours. And I have to say that our little pit stop in, in Las Tunas was one of the most classic things. We woke up a family, they got out of their beds and we pretty much invaded their home and they had a smile in their face, you know. So I have to say that the Cuban people, you know, I'm repeating myself, but the Cuban people have been so open arms to us. You know? Driving around, it's really interesting seeing all the different towns and the cultures and I find it's pretty cool when you go by yourself and just chat to you know people that I'll never know or get the chance to know. And I would describe the people in Cuba as super warm and like they really want to help out. They're they're definitely um, enticed to hang out with us. They they really want to show us their passion. They want to show us Cuba. In terms of American standards, these people have so little yet. It's endless what they are willing to give of themselves. This is another world. We literally are not in Kansas anymore, and everything is different. And it's I've never felt this far removed from my culture in California as I have in Cuba. So we're here in Old Havana, historical place and pretty good vibes around here, mingling with the locals. There's old buildings with holes in them and horses going down the street and people selling cigars and everyone just lively and like, you know, I'm from Cuba, I'm from Havana, this is my town, come with me, I'll show you. I think we soaked in what Havana had to offer. We even got a day of surf out there. A little windy and choppy, but you know, we managed to have some fun. Dos gardenias para ti, que tendrán todo el calor de un beso. De esos besos que te di y que jamás te encontrarán en el calor de otro querer. A tu lado vivirá y se hablarán como cuando estás conmigo y hasta creerán que se dirá te quiero pero si un atardecer las gardenias de mi amor se My name is Junior Valderrón Martinez. I am like uh, the organizers of all the Cuban surfers here in Cuba. The first time I saw uh, surfboards, a real surfboards, was around 1995. The only way we had a surfboard here in Cuba is uh, by donations. We don't have all the uh, other way, you know? Yeah, so we're here in Havana and everybody brought gear from home and um, we ended up giving them a bunch of boards and wax and auto really spearheaded it with the Tris Palma surf shop and yeah it seems like it's gonna go to a good cause everybody over here you know they work together and they all take care of each other so hopefully they're gonna distribute it amongst the community and yeah it's good times. Our trip began in Old Town Havana and ended in Baracoa 
620 miles away. In the end, we didn't find the surf we were looking for, but the adventure and memories from that trip is something I'll never forget. A travel tip to those looking to go to Cuba is to bring all the cash you need as banks and USA credit cards do not work there. And if you are looking to travel across the island of Cuba, do not go with Yuri in his Chevy. Porque existe otro querer